Hey guys and welcome back to All About the Popcorn. I'm Stephanie. Thank you for clicking on this video. Now if you're someone who enjoys talking about movies or in this case ranking them then consider hitting that subscribe button. So today we're going to be talking about the 20 movies that I saw in the month of July. <laughs> I think since I've been doing these monthly tier lists, which has been like a year and a half now, this is probably the most movies I've had in this tier list. I mean, July really brought it with a bunch of movies. Of course, as always, anything that I did review within the month will be in the description box down below. I actually did also do a lot of reviews this month. Uh, believe it or not, this is the first time I actually have a script to really kind of keep me intact. There are some of them, I'm not gonna lie, that I do have a bit of a paragraph, but most of them are about like two to three sentences. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. So up first is going to be the Tomorrow War. I swear you guys, that is a tongue twister for me. Anywho, this is an alien invasion, time traveling, of course, sci-fi action movie that you can currently watch on Prime Video. And as much as that may seem like an exciting thing, I honestly was not totally here for it. Um, there seemed to be, you know, like here and there, most people loved it, a lot of people didn't. I fall within the, I wasn't really here for it. I just think it was an okay movie. Uh, but then again, I am not like a huge sci-fi fan, so that may also be why. But the alien design is actually really, really good. There are some really, really good action scenes. Basically, it's just, you know, trying to save the human race from being extinct. And we're moving right along to the Fear Street trilogy. As you can tell here, I did merge it into one. Um, we're just going to talk about it as a whole. This is one of those paragraph ones that I probably linger on, but again, this is technically three movies that we're talking about. Um, now, this is a fun slasher summer movie that you can currently find on Netflix. You are going to get like Scream, Stranger Things, and Friday the 13th vibes from it. I am a 90s kid, so of course, I gravitated more towards 1994, which is part one. That is my favorite one. Shout out to the CK1 Perfume that Dina was using to mask her scent. Like this video if you want to own that bottle of perfume or just like this video if that bottle was in your house at one point. I do really really love the music from part one and part two because again we are in the 70s and in the 90s. Are these perfect films? Of course they're not. They are just like I said a good fun summer movie um, that I personally would have preferred for it to have come out of course in October time during spooky season and even at that I think it might have actually worked a tad bit better if we had just kind of flushed out the story a little bit more and maybe have made it into like a like a six part or eight part like little Netflix series probably just like a six part because it could have been like basically two episodes per um a year and I think that would have been really really good but I gotta gotta give you my negatives I don't really have too many because like I said I'm able to let pass the negativity of it uh just because I truly really enjoyed the trilogy they do tend to kind of make up their own roles and then like five minutes later maybe like two minutes later rather they do end up breaking those rules also in part three um I wish they had cast different actors to play the people from 1666 just like they did in part two but overall even with a second watch because I did watch them with Desiree um not that long ago I still enjoyed it we did a little binge right after work uh because it's like, they're only about an hour long um so I think these are like a this is a as a whole I think it's a really really good trilogy you know to the forever purge where 12 hours of legal crime apparently it's just not good anymore for some of these radicals. Um, this is a highly, highly political, in-your-face type of movie, as are all the Purge movies. We are tackling like immigration, the refugees, Native Americans, white supremacy. They of course are trying to purify the land here and just kind of make it 100% pure-blooded Americans. These people literally act as if their ancestors didn't migrate their asses over here themselves. But you know what? We're not gonna get political. We're not. We're gonna move on to a very less political, very more friendlier. Oh, I didn't tell y'all where I thought about it. I thought it was an okay movie. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And okay, so moving on, happier times. The Boss Baby, Family Business, 
a sequel that honestly when I heard there was going to be a sequel I said why? Just like another movie on here that we'll get to here a little bit later in this video. You know, not a sequel that we needed, but unlike the other one that we have on here, Boss Baby is actually really, really funny. I truly had a blast with it. I love all the voice actors here. The animation was great. Don't know if the animated series kind of goes in with this movie. I don't know. I didn't feel lost in any way uh, whatsoever just because Basically, you can say that this one takes up right after part one ended, of course, you know, when part one ended, we did see the baby, you know, having her little business suit also. I know it's been getting a couple bad reviews, but I honestly really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really enjoyable, and I actually preferred it over the sequel, so does Desiree. Up next would be Black Widow. So the funny thing about this is that even though Scarlet is supposed to be, of course, the main focus here, she is unfortunately a little bit overshined by Florence Pugh and David Harper. They do absolutely amazing. They are one of my favorite uh, characters in the uh, movie. I did think this was just an enjoyable film. I do hope that you enjoy Scarlett's final performance as a Black Widow. Uh, this may very easily be her final project with Disney. I mean, there's this whole lawsuit going on between her and Disney. So this may very well may be the very last time we see her in a Disney project. Uh, moving on to how I became a superhero, which is a French version of last year's Project Power, which you can both you can find both of these on Netflix. I thought it was just an okay movie. But basically the very short version about this film, we do have some cops just trying to figure out who is selling this uh, drug, you know, in Project Power with a pill. Here we have almost like a tiny little glow stick type of deal that you break up and you kind of sniff up and it gives you temp or it gives like non-soups, temporary powers. And we are continuing on with Gunpowder Milkshake. Oh, should I slow down, you guys? I hope you can understand me. I know that I'm trying to talk fast because I don't want this video to be forever long with 20 freaking movies on here. Anywho, Gunpowder Milkshake is a female version of John Wick. I uh, guess I am doing that John Wick comparison, but here it does make sense, unlike another movie that's on here because we are dealing with assassins. Personally, though, I would compare it a little bit more to like Zack Snyder's Sucker Punch and like add like a little dash of Kill Bill in there. I just kind of get more of those tones from it. We do get a really, really great, strong female cast, uh, but it is basically your typical story when it comes to these type of movies, nothing really new. Basically we get like the big shot assassin who ends up killing the wrong person. So now like the people higher up are now after you, to kind of get revenge and like take you out because again if somebody needs to go down regardless of it being a company we're just gonna be like even though you're great but you are expendable this is the only other movie on this month's list also this month i actually rewatched the movie because i never do that either this is one that i did rewatch just because the first time around i was just like mm, i i don't i don't know i wasn't really really focused with it uh, which is why i didn't end up doing a review for it so i did end up re-watching it and i still just wasn't truly here for it overall so i'm just gonna say it was it was okay because i i don't even think it was really enjoyable to be honest with you moving on to space jam a new legacy this is that other sequel movie that i was telling you about when i did boss baby that we didn't need and this one unfortunately just did not work for me uh i am gonna go ahead and put it under you try though i don't think it's absolutely terribly bad well actually you know what it it, it, it actually is bad but we're gonna put it under you tried because it tried you guys it really did obviously you know we're not gonna get top tier acting here we do have you know lebron who is not an actor he's an athlete and i'm not to say like shit about athletes or anything i mean they're trying i am you know a 90s kid like i said so i did grow up with the michael jordan version which i'm not saying michael jordan did better you know his acting wasn't that great either but it just worked a little bit more with Michael Jordan. He just had some something extra, something different. He had 
the secret stuff. This one basically ended up doing the same thing like Jumanji, like 2017's version of Jumanji. And we have flipped it into kind of a video game mode. It's supposed to be a basketball game, but really it's like a video game. I guess, you know, it works for the generation of today. The basketball rules here are pretty much like thrown out the window. They said, we don't know you. And we end up getting these like really ridiculous video game rules. I was not here for it. And it's also a way for Warner Brothers to really like showcase all the properties that they have. Moving on to Pig. This is a very beautifully shot, very well directed movie. I went into this movie knowing absolutely nothing about it other than Nicolas Cage was in it. Um, it is about Rob, who is played by Cage. Um, he is just trying to find his pig that was kidnapped. You know, he's just pretty much roaming the streets of Portland. Uh, we are within the culinary world um, in this movie. Uh, when I did do the review, I was a little vague on what exactly he did just because I, again, I had not seen the trailer. So I wasn't sure if the whole culinary world was, or him being the chef was like a secret. Cage does give um, a wonderful performance, one of the best of the year so far. There is this wonderful monologue that uh, Cage delivered when he was talking to this other chef and it literally just like drew me in. It is a very quiet, just slow paced movie, but if you stick with it, you're going to enjoy a fully delicious dish. Get it? Because we're in the culinary world. The only type of movie that you enjoy are like these explosion filled, action packed movie, then you should stay clear of this. But for those who do enjoy good quality storytelling, I think you're really going to enjoy Pig. So Pig is actually going under, if I can grab it, under, wow. Actually, you know what? We are about to, we are about to put a new tier on here add a row above it is favorite of the year and i don't know what color i don't think this i don't think i have this color on here yet we're gonna check it out yes we do not have that on there and we're gonna just move that right up there to favorite of the year yep whole new tier i have never had that tier on here before you guys so up next is going to be the first a24 movie on this list Zola. Technically, I believe this movie came out like at the end of June, but I did see Austin Burke's tier list and he included Zola. So I said, you know what? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. So believe it or not, you guys, this is actually based off of a set to be epic. And I said set to be because I personally have not read it. Um, 148 Twitter thread that happened back in 2015. Now I have been on Twitter for quite some time. I definitely was on it in 2015, but I've never been like a fully active Twitter person. I usually just get on there during the award season to be honest with you. But if you saw this Twitter thread, let me know down below. Like what did you think about that thread? Cause apparently it went viral y'all. Apparently it did. And they ended up making a damn movie about it. And who better? to do it than freaking A24. First off, this is not a family type of movie, okay? This A24 movie does tackle sex, sex trafficking, prostitution, crime. You guys, we get a freaking sex montage. Yes, it is a very, very raunchy movie that has a little bit of humor to it, I'm not going to lie. So this is about two dancers, Zola and Stephanie. They actually just meet um, at Zola's job. She's also a waitress, and they kind of pretty much hit it off as far as friendship-wise goes. Uh, Stephanie ends up inviting Zola on this road trip um, to Florida to go make some money. What, what could go wrong, right? What could go wrong? Mind you, they just met. Let's just say Zola is in for a very disturbing weekend. The movie, you guys, is actually really, really good. Totally recommend it if you don't mind stuff like this. But the standout here definitely is Coleman Domingo. He is he was killing it last year in those movies, and he's killing it here. He has this, he's a pimp, you guys, here in the movie. And he has his accent. 
that just kind of comes and goes and it really really like trips me out overall like i said i really thought the movie was really good except except that's what kind of took it away from that wow factor for the damn ending moving on to till death which is Megan Fox's newest action thriller movie. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I thought it was really enjoyable. It was actually, it was really good, but it wasn't to the good tier yet. We're just gonna keep it into enjoyable, but you can see where I have it rated on my letterbox. I've been kind of um, recently ranking all the movies that, I, that I've seen um, and I'm trying to kind of keep track um, so that's also down in the description box so you can check me out on Letterbox. This is a movie that I honestly didn't really know too much about going in other than Emma who is played by, by uh, Fox is basically chained up, handcuffed to her dead husband. So where was I before my battery ran out? Um, till death. So Emma, again, who's played by Fox, um, is pretty much just trying to fight for her life. She's trying to outlast these hostile conditions uh, that she gets trapped in. Uh, the pacing is actually pretty good in the movie. We are pretty much set in one single location. Emma is absolutely no damsel in distress. Next up is The Last Love Letter from Your Lover. It is a Netflix love story that takes place within two time periods, which would be present time, which honestly I had to look up because present time in the movie doesn't quite make sense. They never really tell you what year we're in present time in the movie. If they do, I totally missed it. And they never really give you the ages of like Shaley Willie and Joel Alwyn. Those are the love interests in the 60s. Present time in the book because it is apparently based off of a book which I have not um, read or listened to because I know I love me some Audible um, is 2012. Personally, I was not really here for this movie. Um, I don't think it was actually like not even like under you tried. I'm just gonna say it was okay because you tried. It's not to the Space Jam's level. There was really, I personally rather, let me just, yeah, yeah, no, this is all just my opinion. I just did not feel this love, this passion, this desire, this forbidden love, obviously, that Shaylee and Joe's character, which is the older couple from the 60s, should have been given me. Like, there was nothing there like there was no oh my god like I'm really rooting for you like it was none of that and really this is you know obviously a love story about love and passion and the willingness to change your life for the other person and I got none of it I got none of it and perhaps it was really honestly a miscast Maybe. Before I do move on, we're just gonna say this is not ever going to make it on any of my top romantic movie list. Um, moving on to Jolt. And if you see my review on this movie, I keep calling it Bolt in my 10 review. Ugh, terrible. Jolt. <laughs> I had to make sure I don't call it Bolt. Um, it is a fun summer female-led and directed bloody good action flick that really honestly shouldn't be taken too seriously i really haven't seen the best reviews for this movie i just feel like people are just taking it too seriously like just really go in there turn your brain off and just enjoy what you're getting we have kate beckinsale back in the front seat kicking ass taking no names I don't, I don't know how that goes. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> we also have a great cast here, Laverne Cox, which I still really don't know how I feel about her character. Uh, we have Jai Courtney, we have Bobby Kavanaugh, and also Stanley Tucci. It does set up for a sequel, but honestly, I don't have the highest of hopes for it. But at the end of the day, um, I had a really good time with it. I enjoyed myself with it tremendously. Uh, up next is going to be Blood Red Sky. So instead of being stuck on a plane with snakes, we get stuck on the plane with vampires. But not only that, you guys, um, it is also part hijacking movie. But it is a very, very thrilling movie. I could even say it's like a little gem on Netflix. It does focus on a mother's struggles in not only protecting her child but also dealing with the vampire urges and of course 
the situations of the hijacking that are now present within this time. The look of the vampires is actually really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you like vampire movies, then I do recommend this. I think it was a good movie um, and I had a really good time with it. Uh, but it's also going to be under enjoyable. It was just an enjoyable movie. Moving on to Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. This is... Um, honestly just as disappointing um as the previous two gi joe movies they just can't really get right with these movies uh, i was really looking forward to this film the other ones i just i don't even remember them you guys this one honestly i had to really go back and really think about it because i couldn't really remember too much um i'm all, honestly i'm just gonna put it under you tried we're moving on to Joe Bell. Um, this is another movie on this list that is based on a true story. Um, it does star Mark Wahlberg. He does play Joe Bell. Wahlberg, honestly, here I think gives one of his best performances. It's basically about a father walking from Oregon to New York to speak out um, about the real and terrifying cost of bullying. It was just an uh, okay movie. I honestly was expecting it to be better like I would have liked to have said oh it was enjoyable you guys it really let me down it really let me down I full-on thought I was gonna go into like tear mode like I went prepared to the theater with my freaking box of tissues you guys yes that's who I am I didn't shed one single damn tear you guys no what I was so sad enough with my sadness of not crying you guys who who says stuff like that I do I say stuff like that. Moving on to Resort to Love, which is a Netflix rom-com starring Christian Miliani. Uh, that was surprisingly enough, not terrible. Uh, Christian Miliani's character is a lounge singer, so if you do like to hear her sing, you will hear her sing here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it over here under okay, because it, it was. I don't regret watching it at all. It's a cute enough movie, you guys. It's a cute enough movie. It's predictable. We're in this beautiful island. We're on the final three, you guys, and these are honestly the longest ones. But if you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a like. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. Moving on to the Jungle Cruise. Oh no, just Jungle Cruise. Disney's Jungle Cruise. I need to rewatch this. I do. Um, I won't rewatch it until it's on Disney Plus for free. I, that was me. I don't fall asleep at the theater, you guys. I honestly cannot think of another time I actually fell asleep. Let me correct myself. I didn't technically fall asleep. I was nodding off, okay? And I think it was because it was hot, which is really surprising because honestly, this is totally my type of movie, you guys. Straight up my alley. I was really looking forward to it. Really was. Pirates of the Caribbean, one of my favorite movies of all time, one of my favorite franchises. This definitely took a page out of that book, took a page out of The Mummy, took a page out of the, out of, uh, the, I was gonna say The Jungle Book, out of uh, Indiana Jones. Not quite to the level of, not even close. It's like the back of the books of those. I don't, I'm gonna say it was okay. <laughs> Cause I fell asleep, so I, I can't really be, we're gonna put it in the middle somewhere. I did enjoy Dwayne Johnson as the skipper and he has a little bit of a secret going on. Um, Emily Blunt, I love me some Emily Blunt. She is a strong female here who wears pants, which is an ongoing joke here. A very unnecessary ongoing joke. Moving on to The Green Knight. This is the other A24 movie on this list. This is an, an adaptation from a 14th century poem. This is an art house film with amazing cinematography, you guys. Every scene is just shot so beautifully. The score is very fitting with everything. Def Patel gave an outstanding performance. There are times where he doesn't even Speak, but he's able to convey so much emotion with just his facial expressions. He does play Sir Gawain, who is uh, King Arthur's nephew. We also have Alicia Vikander here, which I adore her as well. She did amazing in the film. The movie is weird. 
but it's gonna leave you captivating and somewhat confused. Probably like a lot confused. No, I somewhat, somewhat. You're smart. I have faith that you're gonna understand this movie. And again, like I said in Pig, if you are somebody who needs like fun, exciting action sequences, then you're going to be very disappointed in this very slow pace lack of nightly battles adventure story but you guys even if this movie does not grab you you cannot deny that this movie looks absolutely enchanting you guys it's beautiful in short the green knight is about sir gawain waiting to prove himself to his family to the kingdom he accepts the challenge that the green knight presented him and at the end it is a story of honor and if you check me on letterbox this is so far my absolutely favorite movie of 2021 we're gonna go ahead and put it right right in front of pig we're doing a little a little ranking up there um last on my list is going to be old one thing i do enjoy about m knight's work is that he is not afraid to take chances and really try something unique sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so you may think that this movie is just about this island that you get stuck on and you're basically aging quickly underneath it all it does hit fears that people have whether it's fear of losing your youth your beauty your mind the reputation that you built just think about it it really does target these things is another one that kind of has a lot of mixed reviews i feel most of them are more on the negative side but i am totally here for it and i thought it was a really good movie i except for the, the end except for the end uh gets one of those that the ending doesn't fully work for me but the overall story i really found very captivating all right guys we did it. We have made it to the end. These are the 20 films that I saw in the month of July. Technically, I guess would be 22 if we break apart the uh, Fear Street trilogy. Really wanted to watch Stillwater. I just never managed to get to the theater <laughs> to watch it. That's why it also took me so long to get this video out to you guys. Let me know down below. What did you guys watch this month? Did we watch any of the same things? Do you agree with my ranking? If we don't, it's totally fine. That is your ranking. This is mine. Let's not be nasty in the comment section down below. All right, guys. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.